Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. This morning, we, we were ministering along the lines of, you know, of the prevailing word. But in that, we got into the, you know, Jesus is our healer, and the word will heal us. And then we got talking about, you know, uh, how that, uh, if the anointing is not manifest or if there's not a, a particular gift of healing and demonstration, we can still get people healed with the word. Can you say amen? Amen. And so um, Psalm 107 verse 20 says, he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And so we thank God for the healing power of God. Let's go on over to Isaiah 53. If you have prayer cloths, you can go ahead and bring them up to the platform. Um, glory to God. We thank God for his word. Now, we're probably going to cover some ground we've covered before. It's, it's, when you're teaching along these lines, it's almost impossible not to. Um, it's like trying to teach salvation and not talk about Romans chapter 3. Amen. It's, trying, it's like talking about faith and not covering Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Or covering, um, covering um, Mark 11, 22 and 23. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Anybody else got prayer calls you want to bring up? Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Isaiah chapter 53. Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness that we should see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Now this just means this. Jesus was not some charismatic, you know, a GQ cover guy. That everybody just followed because he was ha ruggedly handsome and had all the charisma in the world. All right? He was just there. In other words, it, wasn't, it was no beauty that we should desire. It wasn't that, you know, it went, oh, it's Jesus. Ah, oh, Elvis, Elvis. You know, superstar stuff. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. We we, we dis uh, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely, borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Praise the Lord. And so we have here, uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Everybody say glory to God. With his stripes, we are healed. Thank God for the healing power of God. Amen. Um, one of the, probably the best descriptive commentaries on the subject of divine healing we find in this chapter. Um, because we have here the, the, the word that's translated um, here, surely, um, surely it's born our, Grief and carried our sorrows. The word sorrow um, means comes means pain or physical. You know, pain, sorrow, pain, physical, pain, mental. It means um, covers the, the the word of sickness. Certainly, have borne our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. Uh, Greece comes from the word means sickness, macab. And so we have here this commentary that's followed up by um, Matthew chapter. 8 verse 17 where it says that when Jesus healed the sick and, ca and cast out devils with his word that, that it was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah himself took our infirmities to bear our sicknesses then 1 Peter 2 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes we were healed and so the word of God has its own commentary and its own uh, analysis of Isaiah 53 and we find out that it's in, it's in reference, Matthew makes it clear, it's in reference to physical ailments. When the evening was come, they brought many that were possessed with devils. They cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Didn't forgive any sin. Didn't say he forgave sin. So you see, people say that, you know, well, uh, it's healing of the spiritual disease of sin. And people say that. 
And they, they, that's their explanation for why it's not talking about sicknesses. It's talking about something spiritual. Yet he says he cast out the devils and he healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Now infirmity means a weakness. Amen. Okay. Sicknesses or, or diseases or uh, afflictions of the body in, in a physical sense such as cancer, well, of course, in this day, leprosy was, was rampant. Um, there were other diseases they dealt with. You look at um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, it lists a whole bunch of things. And then it goes on and says, and even things not listed here. Well, that covers everything from then. Amen. You know, that, you know Isaiah, uh, you know, Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through the, through the end of the chapter, goes on list and list and list and list and list. It covers a whole gamut of diseases. And then it says, even these that aren't written in the book of the law. Okay, why? Because see, God knows that Satan was going to pervert things and things would, things would happen. We've got diseases that have come up that, that weren't around before. Because people engage in sin. They do things to their body they shouldn't do to their body. Uh, they do things they shouldn't do. Uh, we know that uh, some of our STDs came from, the, from the, um, the Spanish soldiers getting off the ships in South America and engaging in bestiality. And that's where some of the main STDs that you heard about for decades came from. Uh, because they, they, were, they were perverted. <laughs> what else do you say? They were doing perverted things. Well, see, those diseases weren't, weren't there uh, for to be listed in the Bible. When they, but he says any other diseases, God knows the e evil heart and intent of people. Go study your history. It's there. They just were, you know, that's, that's, I know it's gross, but that's where the stuff came from. And so there, there are diseases that have come on the planet uh, since the Bible was written that were covered under Deuteronomy chapter 28, where it said even these that aren't listed in the book of the, this book of the law uh, will come on you if you don't obey the command of the Lord your God. Now, now think about that now. If it, people had done what the Bible said, they wouldn't have created a lot of those diseases. There are a lot, there are a lot of things people do with their bodies. That's pro, that, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of things people do with their bodies that are prohibited, pro, prohibited through the word of God. And if people do what the Bible says, they'd stay out of trouble. It's hard to pass something on to somebody if you're not doing something to pass it on with them with. Everybody's over here. It's hard to pass on sexually transmitted diseases if you're not having sex with people you shouldn't be having sex with. Well, who should you be having sex with? Your spouse? Man and a woman? Hello? You can't have it any other way, man and a woman. Well, if you, if you hold yourself in, in, in purity and chastity until you get married, you can't pass something on that you got from somebody else when you didn't do anything with anybody else to get something from somebody else. Now, that's as nice as I can put it without just being blunter. I can be blunter, but I've I, I chosen not to tonight, all right? I'd be, be a little more straightforward. But the fact is, if you're not engaging in things, you can't get something to pass on to somebody else when you engage with them. And everybody said, glory to God. Well, well, that's what the Bible tells you to hold yourself until, uh, pure until you're married. And then you don't have to be concerned about it. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so, uh, the, but, you know, there were things already there. there, was, there they were dealing with things like tuberculosis, and they were dealing with things, you know, all kinds of ailments in the bodies. And Deuteronomy 28 covers a, a good hunk of those things in the curse of the law. But we found out from the Bible that Jesus came and bore our sicknesses. As a matter of fact, the book, the book of Galatians says of the Lord Jesus Christ in the third chapter, the 13th verse, he said Christ has, uh, has uh, redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Well, what happened on the tree? Well, we know according to Isaiah chapter 53, not only was our sin laid on him, but our sickness was laid on him at the cross. We know from Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, 24. We know from Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, see, people, people go out of their way to make stuff say stuff that it didn't say. See, they'll say the healing is God taking care of the spiritual disease of sin. Then why didn't, Isaiah, then why didn't uh, Psalm 103 just say that? It says, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. 
sickness and disease affect, afflict and affect the body of man. Sin affects the spirit of man. Amen. It affects the spirit of man. Now, sin can cause and wreak havoc in the body. Uh, one of the things we know this is worry and uh, anxiety can cause the body to, to get sick. All right? Now, we, we do know this, that sickness is the stepchild or the child or the offspring of his evil parent's sin, meaning sickness did not enter into man until sin entered into the earth. Man being tried, you being, his body became susceptible to sickness and disease. It actually became susceptible to death at the fall. Man, was not, man would not die until the fall of man. And, that, and so sickness entered in to afflict the body uh, because of sin. Now, it came into the earth that way. Satan began to wreak havoc on the physical body. But the, the sickness and sin are not the same thing. I said sickness and sin are not the same thing. Sickness is not the disease of the spirit. Sin is. And it's not even the disease of the spirit. It's a, you know, we, we, we say these things and we confuse people. People teach that. You know, well, you know, uh, so, you know, when Jesus healed us, he healed us from the evil disease of sin. Well, no, 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 no. He bore your sin. He ain't bore your sicknesses. But your body can get well and your spirit can get born again. You can get born again and not get well. If you don't know how to receive from God. So sickness has to be dealt with, uh, and, and say it this way, in a separate manner. The same kind of faith will get it done. And, you know, and the same sacrifice was offered at the same time. Jesus bore our sin and he bore our sicknesses. That's what the Bible says. Who his own self bear our sin. 1 Peter 2, 24, look over there. You know, now listen, we're, we're going to uh, start selling markable Bibles. Now I know, you know, over, over the years we've gotten kind of used to technology. And we loved having it up on the big screen. Now I, I'm, I'm just as bad as anybody. If I'm in a church service and I got my Bible open up, it's just easy to look up at the screen. But you know what? You can't mark the screen. And if you try to, I'm, I'm going to take you down. Cost a lot of money to replace that screen. All right, if you run there with your highlighter and try to mark the screen, I'm going to be, I'm going to be upset. Particularly when they take and put the next scripture, your mark won't be in the right place anyway. Okay, but you need to bring your Bible to church. You need to be able to mark your Bible up. Well, I can't mark my Bible up. Well, get rid of yours and get one of ours out of the bookstore. With ours, you can mark in. You're still trying to find yours to move it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> but it do you good to underline scriptures and see things. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Forget not his what? Benefits. Who forgiveth all your iniquities. That's sin. Who healeth all thy diseases. That's sicknesses. Diseases. To be diseased in your body. You can suffer from diseases. We, we, we refer to certain things as diseases. We call them sicknesses. We refer to them the same way. So the, Jesus, and then for, you know, Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, 24, whose own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we be in dead sin, should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. We find out that Jesus carried our sin and our sickness at the same time. His body was carrying our afflictions while his spirit was carrying our sin. Well, how do you know that? 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21. He who knew no sin was made sin. Now, King James puts the words to be in italics. Actually, they were added. They weren't in the Greek. He was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for it. Well, he became sin spiritually to redeem us. He had to be, you know, I, the, the, the great, great and wonderful thing about redemption is a, a, a word called identification. Jesus identified with us in our sin and then bore our penalty. And now we can identify with him in his resurrection and bear his righteousness. He who, was made, he who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, starts out in verse, you know, verse out in 17, says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things passed away, behold, all things become new. Then he gets down to verse 21. For he, 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 he who knew no sin, he made him to be, now to be, if you look in your King James Bible, to be is, is italicized. Now, they don't do it on these, these scripture things here. But in the, in, in the Bible, it's to be to be is not in the Greek. It's not there. It's not in the original transcripts. 
So if you take that out, which is, not, which is totally legitimate because they're not there. They were, and if you go read the beginning of your Bible, it says at the front, it says any words we place in that types are added to, to signify we added, the, the translators added that in order to help make it read easier. Or it also be, sometimes just because they thought that's what it should say. But they did put it in Italian to let you know that it's not in the original Greek. They put it there. So we're not taking away or adding. They, they, they made a clarification of it. So I like to read it the way that it would be read. For he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus never, experienced, never sinned. He became sin. He was made sin. What? He bore our sin. In identifying with us, he bore our sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he identified with us in our lost state. Then he took and bore our penalty in that lost state. And then God raised him from the dead, justified. And the Bible says justified in spirit. Raised him up, sat him on his right hand. And now we identify with him in his righteousness and resurrection. Glory to God. He identified with us. So in, by the confession of faith and the believing in our heart uh, of his lordship and, and who he is, if you believe in your heart, that, uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, God's raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made. Amen. We, we confess his lordship. We believe in our heart, but we confess it and we're born again. So what do we do? We, we, at that point, we can identify with him in his resurrection, in his righteousness. See, he's identified with us. And at the same time he was identifying with our sin, he was bearing by the stripes laid on him, the wounds, our sicknesses. Now we know that the earth became darkened for the space of three hours while Jesus was on the cross. Why? Now I honestly believe because man couldn't look on him in, 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 that, in that state. When, uh, when all the sin of the world and all the sickness of all humanity came on him at one time, it, Look, look back here in Isaiah chapter 52. Hallelujah. Verse 13 says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled, be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. And it goes right on. To, we know he's talking about Jesus because it goes right in 53 talking about him on the cross. His visage was more than any man. He didn't even look like a man. Now, add to the Roman scourging, which was three Roman soldiers with a... How many, how many saw the passion of the Christ? That was as close to an accurate description Hollywood has ever done of the scourging of Jesus. And it was so bad that, you know, uh, uh, Mel Gibson had on some real thick leather thing on his back, but some of the things went around actually got, and actually cut him on his, on his stomach, on his underside. It, it was so bad. But that scourging with the Roman tethers, he didn't have some cowboy bull whip, you know. And that's, not what they, that's not how the Romans did it. There's about this wide about this long with multiple tethers on each whip. And usually a, a, a scourging was about three different guys at the same time. One was hitting, when his pulled back off, another guy was hitting them. 39 stripes save one. That means 39 lashes, except 40 instead of 40. So 40 stripes save one, 39. Bone, rock, uh, nails, anything they could put in the end of that that would just rip flesh when they, when they did it. So think about that Jesus went through the scourging. He had been beat with the poles. They had plucked his beard from his face and then placed the crown of thorns on his head. And we're not talking about the little rosebud stuff you got around your house. We're talking about, about an inch uh, woven, about an inch long on each of those thorns. And how many of you have ever gone to your little rosebush and just stuck the little bitty thing? That, I make, I make a grown man shout. All right, Nathan. Hallelujah beat with the rods, all that's taken place, and then taken and put on the cross. And sickness, all the sickness has ever known to man went on him. All the sin mankind had ever committed went on him. His visage was more than any, more than any man. His form more than some, he didn't, I, I don't know what the Amplified Bible says, I, I think it says it's a little more descriptive, but Jesus that's why darkness had to come on there. They couldn't look at it at that point when all that took place. 
He, be, he identified with humanity in the, the, the most debased, lost state of mankind and the consequences of that sin in their bodies of sickness and disease and afflictions all on him all at one time. So he could take it to the cross and bear it away. And then bozos come along and say, God put some of that right back on you. Come on now. How can we believe that Jesus suffered the way he suffered so God could pick it up and put it on you? Now, I, I, my kids went to school with people who actually believed that God made people sinners so he could, you know, make them something different. Made them prostitutes. So he could look great when he redeemed them. He don't have to make somebody do stuff. They're already doing it. There's plenty of folk doing stuff. You can go redeem without having to make them do it. You know? God made them a prostitute. So when they tested, no, oh, he didn't make them a prostitute. Let no man say that he's tempt when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. For every man is tempted when he, what? When he follows after evil himself, James, James chapter 1 tells us, let no man say that when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. For God tempteth no man with evil. Hello? God can't be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God don't make you sin. God don't make you sick. Hello? Sickness is evil. We all know that. Uh, just found out that the, what the Schubert's uh, family friends, the little girl, got uh, meningitis? Uh, strep. A strep, strep throat. Strep throat. And it went, it started moving around her body. Went, in, went, in, went in one place, went into her brain, went down, and, went down, got into her heart, had a heart attack, and got 11 years old. Now, somebody's going to get down there and say the Lord knew what he was doing. The Lord knew what he was doing at Calvary. When he took that to the cross, so we wouldn't have to if we, if we, we, we would trust God and believe God. Amen. God didn't put that on that little girl. I said, God didn't put that on that little girl. He didn't kill that little girl. He loves that little girl. He loves the parents. He loves the families. When people come along and go, well, the Lord did what he was doing. We're praying for you, God. Only God understands why he did this. No, the devil hates people. Devil is evil. He is evil. You got people that come along now and say, if you pray for the sick, you're of the devil. Because God knows what he's doing. I don't know. God, yeah, God knows what he's doing. He knew what he's doing when he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to redeem us from poverty, sickness, and, and, and spiritual death. Can you say amen? Jesus came to be our redeemer, praise God. Jesus came to carry our sickness. Jesus came to carry our disease. Jesus came to carry our poverty. Jesus came to carry our spiritual death. Yes. Glory to God. So we, we, can't, we can't carry it. I always get amazed at the church folk who go around and say, God, put this on me. They're going to the doctors trying to get rid of it. Hello? Now, if you really believe God put something on you to teach you a lesson, you ought to get in your prayer closet and ask God to give you a double portion. Give me more so I can learn more. Honestly. I know that sounds a little facetious. Well, I'm being facetious. If you're, if you're going to believe that God put it on you to teach you something, you better stop going to that doctor to get rid of the will of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, the Lord, get up and testify in church. The Lord put this on me to teach me something. And then you get up the next morning and run down to Dr. So-and-so and see if he can get rid of what the Lord put on you. Hello? You hypocrite? The Lord knows best. Then, then take it. Fight, the, fight, him every, fight the Lord's will right up until the draw of the last breath sometime. <laughs> I hope the doctor can get rid of what the Lord put on them. Let's recognize it for what it is. The devil brought that. It's a work of the enemy. It's a work of, it's a work of the, the kingdom of darkness. It wasn't in the earth until the fall of man. The fall of man was an act of the enemy and, and rebellion by man against God's command. And then opened the door up to these things. 
Man came, became susceptible to death, became susceptible to disease. We have no record of anybody being sick before man fell. Nobody died until uh, Cain rose up and, I mean, uh, and killed his brother Abel. And the only reason that happened because sin had been brought in. Hello. Now, so sickness and disease are enemies of God. Enemies of the plan of God. God did not bring them into the earth. They're a perversion. Go, you go study a virus. Viral infections and those kind of, but study a virus. It gets into the body and gets into the cells and perverts the cell. It attacks the cell and mutates it and perverts it to work its disease in there. Cancer is a, is a perversion of, the healthy, of a healthy cell. And it's, re, it's reproducing itself and multiplying and exchanging that DNA code into other cells. And, and it's, it's perverting what was really normal. And we know this. They, you know, what, 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 so what do they do? Doctors will go in when they do chemotherapy and radiation treatment. What are they doing? They're trying to kill all the cells that have the perverted DNA code in it so that this normal cells can take back over and reproduce and heal the body. See, your body is designed to heal itself. That's the way it was designed. When we give, anti when we give uh, antibiotics and they give different medicines, they're to, they're, they, they don't heal. They really don't heal. They oftentimes suppress the activity in antibiotics. We're talking about bacterial things then. So we're, we're suppressing the effect of those things while the body heals itself. The body heals itself. Cancers we cut out, big, you know, tumors and stuff are cut out so that the body can, and, and hopes that the body can take over and do its thing and heal itself. That became something that didn't happen or, or became a problem when sin came and man came into sin. Man began to sin against God. His body became death doomed and so the body didn't work the way it, quite the way it was designed to work. So when you go to the doctor, that doctor didn't heal you. The medicine they gave you didn't heal you. It aided your body in its ability to heal itself. And if they got cut, something cut out and they take something out, that's because it, they, the, the body couldn't do anything about it. They just take it out so the body can fix up all the other stuff and go on about its business. <coughs> so cancers are cut out, the tumorous cancers, those things are cut out so the body can, the, 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 the normal DNA of the body how many of you have ever gotten, you know, a cut and all of a sudden it's red and puffy the next day and, you know, sometimes it's got pus in it and all that kind of stuff? What is that? That is the body running and sending uh, things in your body over there to heal. It's, it's working on the entrance of, of disease or, or uh, foreign, bo foreign bodies or foreign matter in that place and it rises up and tries to, you know, get it out. It's working to kill it. That's what your body does. And if the disease are really bad, then the body doesn't have enough recovery time. And it gets, that's why we get antibiotics. We get, you know, Neosporin, you know, the, the triple antibiotic, you know, miracle ointment. You know, it helps work out there where the body works. But, you know, that Neosporin don't make that cut go away. Your body heals that cut. It regrows that. Heals that tissue up. Now, that's, that was the plan of God. God designed the body to take care of being whole. Can you say amen? Okay. So but since we live in a fallen world and things come, then, then uh, you know, we a lot of times either need aid because we're living in a fallen world. Now, we can go to the aid of a doctor with medicine. I'm not against that. As a matter of fact, in some cases, if you don't go to the doctor, you ain't going to be here long enough to get healed spiritually, supernaturally. We're, all, we're, all, we're, we're four doctors. Jesus even, Jesus even had one hanging around his ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm not against doctors. But our faith needs to be in the power of God, in the word of God, in the healing power of God. Amen. So that we can receive from heaven. Now, you can be, you can, you can, uh, I remember John Lucy used to say, I, said, I take this medicine in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to help alleviate symptoms while my faith heals my body. Amen. And believe, you know, 
Some people go, ah, if you take medicine, it's a slap in the face of Jesus. Ah, that's, that's just too much. Some people aren't there yet. If, if, if their faith isn't there yet, give them enough to, so they can hang on until they get the faith there. Amen. Give them what they need to get their faith there. One woman took her glasses off one time, slipped them because somebody else did. I took my glasses off and stomped them. I see perfectly. Some other woman saw that in church. The next week, she's out riding around, running up all over the curb, running in the trash cans, knocking mailboxes down. <laughs> Came back to Brother Hagin and said, uh, I don't understand. He said, well, don't you understand? He said, well, I, she took her glasses off and stomped them. She's perfectly. I took mine off. I'm running all over the road. He said, sister, go back and get your glasses. He said, now, sometimes, you know, healing's progressive. Just keep using your faith, and, and as, as your eyes get better, get a, better, get a, get a less prescription. And it wasn't too long. She, was, she started going, and, and, and then her, how many of you ever put on glasses that's too strong? Now, Janie's got some readers around the house. I'll put them on that, and that make you dizzy. They're, they're so strong. You, oh, all right. They, I mean, unless it's right here, you, I mean, you look out right here, and it's a, oh. Pick them up, and they come right back. I can't, I can't put them things on. And uh, she, all of a sudden, she started getting back and kept going back to the doctor. And the prescription for the glasses kept getting a lower strength. Until finally, she didn't need glasses. Well, praise the Lord. That's not condemning. Not condemning anybody that's wearing glasses. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I got some on myself, you know. I'm just saying, you know, she, she tried to copy somebody else. And it didn't work. Hello? We have to, follow, have to follow after God directs us. And, if, you know, and, and progress, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't care if it's progressive, instantaneous, you know, uh, overnight, whatever, as long as you get the answer in the end. Isn't that right? So if you've got to take some medicine until your faith gets to a place, it can take it, and then glory to God, take the medicine. Amen. The, uh, the year I was at at Ramah, Christmas of 1980, I went to Ramah in 1980, graduated in 1981, but that Christmas of 1980, uh, over in student housing, uh, there was a fellow over there, and uh, he got a viral infection, a, a stomach virus. And, um, you know, with, with vomiting and diarrhea, he just, you know, what happens if, if, you, if you don't replenish your fluids, you'll die. It'll kill you. You can just have, a, you just have some kind of bug that keeps washing you out. And if you can't get electrolytes and stuff back in you, it, it'll kill you. Well, he was going to stand on his faith. People talked to him and said, no, you need to drink something. You need to get something, you know. I mean, you get some Gatorade, Gatorade you, know, but, you know, of course, Pedialyte. How many remember Pedialyte? Parents with your kids. You put, and it, had, it, it wasn't just a liquid. It had what they call electrolytes in it that helped your body and that kind of stuff. Gatorade has that in it. I mean, you know, one, thing, one of the best things you can do is get, either get Pedialyte or Gatorade when you've got those kind of things going on and just drink it. And, well, what if I throw up again? Just, your body will absorb some. Okay? Now, he died in student housing. They came back, uh, you know, people came back, he'd been, he died up in there from dehydration. Now, he was using his faith, but he wasn't being wise enough to realize, you're, you know, you need relief for your body right now. You just can't sit here and keep vomiting and having diarrhea and not get anything back in you and say, I'm healed of the Lord, I'm healed of the Lord, I'm healed of the Lord. When he could have just taken and drank some, some Gatorade or something, and it would have sustained his body. Amen. Well, how would he know if it was supernatural or whatever? I don't really care as long as he lived. Amen? What do you do? You start using your faith and start building your faith that you won't get that again. If you didn't get it right out the first time, go ahead and start using your faith. Get done what you got to get done to live. And then start building your faith so that if it comes back, you won't, you know, I'm not taking that again. Now, um, the story, one of the stories that Hagin used to tell about the woman, you know, uh, she had to have a tumor removed. And uh, was going to go in for, he tried and tried and tried to get her just to believe God. And uh, he talked to her and she, she just, I can't believe that. He said, what can you believe? She said, I can believe that God will guide the hands of the surgeon skillfully. And, uh, that, you know, they'll get everything and I'll be all right. He says, okay, what, what was it? He couldn't get her to come up where he was. He went down where she was and got into agreement. Amen. Pray for her. He says, now we're going to pray that. We're going to pray for a supernatural recovery. So much that it's a miracle that the doctors will say your recovery was a miracle. Now, this is, this is back in the 50s. So you know, we were just talking uh, recently about you know, somebody having some surgery. You know, now if they go in and take out a gallbladder or, or your appendix or whatever, you know, now 30 years ago, they cut you from here to here. 
They just cut you wide open and go in. Now, it's all micro. I mean, it's almost outpatient surgery. They, go, they can make two little decisions, put the instruments in, one to get, get it, you know, and they go in and scope and get it. And you'll think, my goodness, that 30 years ago, you were in the hospital for three, for, for three weeks and you couldn't drive for eight weeks and all this stuff. Now, you know, they got you up running around the next day, except Carrie can't have any chocolate milkshakes. I'll drink one for you. How about that? Just tell you how good it was. Bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> chocolate cherry milkshake from the cookout. Put some cherries in it. and bl <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And so, you know, she, when they took this tumor out and went in and, 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 uh, and they came in to offer her some medicine and uh, morphine. And uh, she said, I don't need anything. I'm not hurting. The doctor said, you got to be hurting. Laying up there with your belly cut wide open. And gave her something anyway. But she, that's the only shot of, of, of a painkiller they gave her the whole time. And a couple of days later, the, he, he, the doctor was up there and, and, and Brother Hagin was up at the hospital. He said, that, that, I want to tell you right now, preacher, preacher, that's a miracle in there. See? Now, here's the thing. He never had to pray for her again because after that, she could build her faith up and was able to receive any time she needed healing. Now, all she could get to at that point was the guiding of the surgeon's hand skillfully, but there was a miracle in her recovery. And it did something to her faith. And she stayed after it and kept at it. Well, see, it's not a big, see, we don't, get, we don't condemn people because they don't get it instantly, supernaturally. Hallelujah. We rejoice when people get well. I say we rejoice when people get well. If it's supernatural, then it's, I mean, if it's a, it's a miracle, then praise God. If it's a combination, praise God. If it's God in the surgeon's hands, skillful, listen, they can make a mistake. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want nobody going to me unless they, they got God on, uh, operating with them. Because some of those guys leave tools in there and stuff, all kinds of stuff, and they shouldn't leave in there. My granddaddy, um, Julie, Julie's guy was in the hospital, and, and I think they have a little bit of problem with, with something they couldn't find. My grandfather, when he had quadruple bypass surgery uh, over at Pitt County Memorial Hospital in Greenville, uh, and they, back, you know, they started stapling them up. They didn't sew them up anymore. They just stapled them up. They had to go back in five times because he was leaking. They couldn't find it. The last time they went in, a little place squirted. And they were, able to, so they were able to fix that. Well, I want them to get it right the first time on me. Amen? I don't open me back up several, you know, seven, eight times. I don't want that. I want to just get it right the first time. Amen? They couldn't keep his blood pressure. And they, and they, they knew he was bleeding internally because when they went in, there'd be blood pulled up and then they couldn't figure out why. So I, I'm, I'm tell you right now, we, we're going to believe God anytime somebody has an operation. They got, their hands are guided skillfully. There won't be any complications. You know, the gods that work with them, they'll make every, make every uh, uh, suture right. Everything will be just hunkadory. Can you say amen? And then we walk in the light of that. Well, that's, that's God working. If that's what the people can believe, then, we, then that's what the answer, they, they got the answer to their prayer, didn't they? Did they? If that's what they're believing, then they got the answer to their prayer. Hallelujah. Now, we always want people to get, you know, it's, it's always great when people just go, whoa, praise God, I received that. And, and then they go back to the doctor and it's all gone. And we all rejoice about that. But I'll tell you what, if they, if they get healed and the doctor did something and, and there, was, there was intervention in, in the natural realm with God working in the supernatural realm, we still rejoice. Why? Because they're well. Amen. We still rejoice. Praise God. And we don't condemn. There's no condemnation. I said there's no condemnation. Praise God. Can you say amen and glory to God? Hallelujah. Thank God for his healing power. Thank God for him working in conjunction with us. Thank God that wherever our faith is, he'll hook up with us there and, and work with us. Praise God. I said amen. I mean, one time Jesus made spit, took spit and made clay and second some guys out. I said, go wash at the pool. How about the time he told the guy to stick out his tongue and he spit on it? I mean, most churches now, they'd run, you, they'd run the preacher right out of the church and, and beat him out in the parking lot. <laughs> Brother Hagin had a woman come out, had a big old tumor in there, and the Lord said, hit her in the belly. He said, you're going to get me in trouble with these people. He said, I said, punch her in the stomach. She came up, and he, he hauled back and punched right in the stomach. And then he said that thing went, well, that's supernatural. 
I said, that's supernatural. Can you say amen? Well, we rejoice in that. Why? God was at work. People got blessed. People got ministered to. But then you have people come up and you lay hands on them and, and, and then come back a few days later and just something just disappeared. Amen. I said amen. Somebody say glory. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.